What's up guys? It's Bromley from Empire Barbell. I'd like to welcome you to our newly painted, newly refurbished training facility. We got new equipment coming in. We gave our look and overhaul. Slowly but surely, we're inching our way towards the status of an actual training facility. We'll get there one day. So today I want to talk a little bit about bicep tendonitis. Uh, it's specifically a brand of pain that you feel in your shoulder that people will often confuse for some type of shoulder pain or shoulder ailment. Um, when I'm struggling to try and find some topic to rant about, usually I end up just looking inward and you know, seeing what's going on in my own training career at the time. And it's no surprise that after 15 years of competing, beating my body into the ground, most of the inspiration I get has to do with either uh, rehab or injury prevention. So that's where we're at right now. So happened a couple months ago, I started to get some shoulder pain right in this shoulder. It was an area I've never really experienced pain like that before. I've had shoulder injuries, both shoulders over the years, but uh, this one, it came after a heavy cycle where I started incorporating seated uh, pin presses, uh, military pin presses from about nose height. There's a range of motion I've never exploited. Mechanically, you're stronger there. So as the weeks went on, I was handling more weight, more weight, more weight, and my strict press went through the roof. Now, the trade-off was that my shoulder had to deal with forces it was not used to dealing with with any type of strict press movement ever. So I developed an overuse injury. Now when it comes to overuse injuries, I mean look, you use your body, it's like driving a car. You put a lot of miles on your car, you're going to get a flat tire. So overuse injuries happen. I mean there's no way to avoid your patellar tendon from being loaded when you squat. As you adapt to, to squatting, you can get patellar tendonitis. That can happen anywhere in your body. So you have to get good at knowing is this just a byproduct, is this growing pains of getting good at this movement and getting your connective tissue and joints to thicken and get stronger to adapt to this load or is it a byproduct of movement dysfunction i put my nose to the grindstone started researching went through some uh, evaluations some assessments figured out it was in fact my bicep tendon so for those of you that don't know your shoulder is supported by this little this cup the glenoid fossa which comes out of your scapula and your shoulder joint your the the head of your humerus sits in it and it moves around. So that's the, the front of your uh, humerus. The bicep tendon, the, the one of the heads comes up over, over this ball joint right here, comes up through a groove and attaches to the top of that glenoid fossa. So there's this little groove right here in your shoulder where your bicep tendon comes up and over. There's another one that branches off that I believe goes in the coracoid process, this little hook that sticks out of your scapula. Now. The thing is the bicep actually takes on a lot of stress from pressing. It's not a main mover. You don't think of it as being directly involved in pressing, but it is. Uh, if any of you have ever blown your biceps out on a bicep workout and then had the bright idea to try and press the day after, you know it's a no-go. It doesn't work. You're going to be weak. You're going to be unstable. Uh, it's an easy experiment to run. The reason is, is because it has a big stabilization role. In benching, yes, but specifically in overhead pressing. I mean, when you're in this compact press position where you have yourself loaded with a barbell, I mean, that bicep is creating tension. It may not be an actual mover, but it is creating compression at the elbow joint, which means it's, it's tense. It's creating that pressure, which means that both ends of the tendon are going to be loaded. That's just the way it is. So that creates tension, which can create overuse and inflammation. And that's what we're dealing with right now. Uh, so the way I diagnosed it was I can go through pretty much any range of motion in this palm down, this pronated position because your bicep is engaged in supination, put your palm up. So when your palm's down, your bicep is relaxed and it's not as loaded. So I can actually put quite a bit of force through this range of motion, there's really no pain. The second I go supine, the second I put my palm up, all it takes, I'm not kidding, there's about two pounds of pressure and that, that lights up, I feel that right up there. And the higher I get, ooh, I get right there, ooh, it's, it's spicy, it hurts. So knowing that, and then you know, if I get up in this like a front raise, I'm fine. The second I flex my elbow and that bicep shortens, just insane pain. So pretty good idea. Okay, it's bicep tendonitis. So how do I deal with it? One of the first resources I came across, a personal training uh, vlog. It was just two run-of-the-mill personal training, or sorry, uh, physical therapy, PT. Physical therapists, not personal trainers. I wasn't asking the idiots at LA Fitness how to fix my bicep tendonitis. Uh, physical therapist uh, recommended just sitting down, arm on a pillow, finding the painful spot, because what does tendonitis do? It, it, it's inflammation, it hurts to the touch. You have patellar tendonitis, you can put your finger on your patella, it stings. 
So the idea is you should be able to find that little, uh, that little web of pain right in that groove. And once you find that spot, you give this side to side massaging technique. And the idea is it's all the smashing and flossing, all the other stuff we do. The idea is break up tissue, get things to slide better, get rid of scar tissue, uh, increase blood flow. And then that's all supposed to help with the recovery process. Problem, if you've been training as long as I have, or even if you haven't, some of you might have what I have, which I don't have a normal shoulder. I have like a normal shoulder with like a meatball on top. So all of this padding makes it really difficult to get in and find anything that actual, actually hurts. And on top of that, even if I could find it, the idea of digging hard enough, they were recommending five minutes a couple times a day. I mean, I'm gonna start turning purple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, be asphyxiating because you know, five minutes, I can't, I can't stand for five minutes, let alone sit there and rub on my bicep tendon. So the likelihood of me doing that was absolutely zero. So we looked to other methods. So I compiled like a buckshot approach. So we're gonna, as long as something doesn't hurt or interfere with the rest of your training or rehab, we can do multiple different modes of rehab and kind of cast a wide net and hope that we get recovery a little bit quicker. The three prong approach I came up with is uh, one, to uh, increase flexibility to stretch. If you got bicep tendonitis from the shoulder, that is a sign of dysfunction. We talked about it being growing pains from adapting to a movement and the load and the weight as you get stronger, or it being dysfunction. If the bicep tendon is inflamed, that means it's taking on more load than it should be, which means things aren't moving right. Now I know I have tight shoulders. I mean, look, if I'm standing here with good posture, my shoulders back, arms to the side, this is not comfortable, this is tight, I mean, my pelvis is tilted, I got my ribs down and my shoulders back. If I relax, you see everything get pulled forward. Now it's not as dramatic as it used to be, but still my shoulder sits forward. Why? Because we all do a ton of pressing, overhead benching. We don't do nearly as many rowing exercises as we should be. We don't hang, we don't distract the shoulder. We don't give a fair, you know, balanced, equal treatment of our shoulder joint the way we should. So it's pretty much universal. Everything becomes pulled forward. The front delt's tight, the pec is tight and the bicep gets tight. Now, especially when you have that tightness and you're talking about creating all this compression, all this tightness right here. And then even beyond that, you're talking about affecting the way that you lock out, how active your shoulders can get. Can you rotate properly? Do you have good internal, external rotation so you can carry that load overhead properly? I know I have all kinds of issues with that. It's just obvious to me. So one, I gotta open this up because if I can keep my shoulder back, then I know that I'm gonna be able to, to carry the load in a much more effective position. It's gonna be closer to how your body should carry that load. Uh, the second approach is gonna to be to increase internal rotation. Now internal rotation is related to how you catch something overhead, whether you're talking about a press, a jerk, a snatch. When your overhead, as the elbow swivels out, that's internal rotation. I have huge problem sticking the lock out when I jerk and when it gets over a certain weight, I end up doing this little catch and the weight's in front of me and I end up doing kind of a gentle press out because I'm not a secure overhead. So I know that I'm sure I can externally rotate okay, probably needs a little improvement, but I'm really short on internal rotation. Now, when you're short on internal rotation, I mean, think of a dip, right? If I'm coming down, this is about as far as I can get. If I have to get lower, that shoulder has to roll forward. So my scapula has to kind of come, come up and over and what happens when I do that? Everything's short, everything's tight, everything's angry. So got to open up the joint, got to spread that out, got to increase internal rotation. And the last one, good old fashioned, smashing, flossing, tempering, basically just getting blunt force into the muscle, forcing the muscle through a range of motion while it's pinned down, while it's dealing with that force. Basically just brute force, forcing tissues to slide better. Same thing as the remedy, the two finger, you know, five minute rub remedy. It's just breaking up tissue, getting things to slide better, uh, getting more blood flow, that's a big one. Tendons do not get blood flow. Bones heal faster than some sprains do because tendons just take forever to heal. And actually, as I understand it, they don't get blood flow when they're at rest. They do get some blood flow when they're being used. We have some arm wrestlers in here. Part of the growing pain of arm wrestling is dealing with all of this force that your shoulder and elbow is not meant to deal with. And over time, their bones and tendons just get fat and thick, but until that time, they are achy, they're inflamed, they hurt. It's just part of the growing pains. So these guys get really good at managing that pain. 
And when I see somebody do a hard tournament or hard practice, I see them in here the next day and they got bands and they're just doing sets of 50 or 100 because they need blood flow in there because that's how the tendon is going to grow and get thicker. So that's my explanation of bicep tendonitis. I'm going to show you a couple exercises over here, kind of what I run through, what I've had success with. So hopefully it helps you. All right. So tier number one is stretching, is getting the shoulder joint open. So I'm sure some of you have done like a doorway stretch or something. You need to get that bicep lengthened out, but you also need to get your shoulder and your, uh, your pec lengthened out. Now, one of the reasons I knew that biceps were like the candidate for the problem I was having is I have short biceps. How do I know that? Well, neither of my arms locked out until a couple years ago, I popped this bicep flipping a tire. You can actually see bicep balled up a couple of inches on this side. Once I did that, oh look, I can lock my elbow out all the way. This one is still short. You know, notice my upper arm's parallel with the ground and veers up at an angle. So sometimes I almost wish this one would just go make my life easier. So uh, if any of you have done the doorway stretch, this is like that, but a little bit better. You're gonna take a band, fix it up high, and you wanna wrap it around. Ideally, I don't like to have to do anything with my hand. I wanna be able to just relax so I can really focus on getting everything long. So you're gonna walk away, and then you're going to pivot, pivot your hips and your shoulders away, and you're gonna turn. Now you wanna let the band distract. This is an example of shoulder distraction where you have a force that's pulling the, the joint apart. We're creating space in the shoulder joint. So that's an added bonus because we never do anything that distracts, we never do anything to create space. We just smash that, that uh, uh, humerus just into that fossa and it, it just wears it down over time. Don't just hang there, really extend your elbow. Uh, and then as you get comfortable, you can turn away more and more and more. And you just want to hang. You want to do this for an extended period of time. A little 30 second half stretch isn't going to cut it. You want to do it for, I'd say 90 seconds minimum. You can probably get up to three minutes if you're feeling a little froggy. Now, the other one that we do, uh, you just set a bar up in here, okay? You're going to go over the top. Now, you can see as I grab for you, you see my shoulders come forward because that's how inflexible I am. So as I have my palms over the bar, I'm going to walk away. Now, the first thing you want to do is straighten your elbows. Then you want to slowly try to bring your shoulders back into a good position. Already there, shit should be getting spicy, and I feel it. So you got your, your front delts are just getting ripped apart. You got your biceps being lengthened out. Your pecs are being opened up. Once you get that position, then you want to try to take a knee. Now, the key here is to try and stay upright. Don't get hunched over. Don't let those shoulders come forward. Head up, chest up, and only come as low as you comfortably can. Now you can play around with that depth because again, you want to be down there for 90 seconds to two, even three minutes. Now we're going to go into internal rotation. So I already said, okay, right here, I'm short. I need to work on being able to get better rotation without my scapula coming up and over like that. So this one I got from the Smashworks guy, which I've been applying. So we got the band up nice and high right here. We're going to do the same thing, wrap it around so that I don't have to do anything with this hand. I can keep it behind me. Now, especially with the shoulder that's achy, you want to give yourself a little bit of a, a little bit of pull here so you don't have to force yourself in that position because that'll cause a pain. The idea is to get your hand behind you. Now, notice, this shows how shitty my internal rotation is. As I get my hand behind me, my shoulder comes forward and my hand is flush against my lower back. Now, ideally, I'd be able to keep my shoulder back and I could have some space between my hand and my lower back, but that's not the case. So we're going to utilize this band to do that. So, right there, I'm not doing anything, but let that band slowly distract, pull my hand back, and I'm staying nice and upright. Again, 90 seconds, up to two, even three minutes. Uh, don't just do it for 30 seconds and give up on it, because you're not gonna get anything out of that. All right, now this isn't new by any stretch of the imagination. I've seen multiple people do something like this with the barbell. Uh, basically, what we're gonna be doing is using the weight of the barbell to pin that bicep down. So you want to come right, right at the top of the bicep uh, where it's pinned in between your bicep and your delt, right? So what we're going to do, so you're going to put your leg on the bar and that's going to allow you to lean into it and get a little more pressure. So just right there, that is highly uncomfortable. Um, and what you could do now that it's tacked down is a tack and floss approach, right? The Kelly Sarret push. You got the muscle tacked down, so you're gonna force that muscle through that range. You're gonna force the tissues to break up, slide a little bit easier, and uh, hopefully get rid of some scar tissue. And there will definitely, definitely be a, a increase in blood flow to that area. 
So because it's the bicep I'm interested in mashing, I'm gonna turn a little bit, find where it's spicy. I think I got a handle on it. And I'm gonna start flexing and extending. Now, as I find that spot, oh, there it is. I'm gonna go through this pattern flexing and extending. Then I'm gonna start working on rotation. I'm gonna floss back and forth just like that. Ooh, there it is. I found it. And actually, yeah, that's that feels like the head that goes that goes right up into the glenoid fossa. That's right where all the all the inflammation is. And again, a couple minutes. All right, this is 90 seconds, two, three minutes. You need a long time in here. It hurts. Uh, as you break up tissue, it should hurt less and less. Remember, soft tissue should never should never hurt to the touch. Okay, the next one utilizes the lacrosse ball, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. You can do this by pinning it up against a wall and putting your shoulder into it, or you can do it on the floor. So we wanna get back in that hand behind the back position right here to kind of expose your pec and your delt. And you're gonna lay into it and you're gonna move side to side and it shouldn't take long before you find that, that, that angry area. Again, it shouldn't hurt to the touch. So a little bit of pressure causing a lot of pain is a sign you gotta work that out. Um, and you want to spend a couple of minutes going back back and forth you want to find those areas you know practice some discovery play around with it find where it pinches find where it hurts and just dig in there all right this last one uh if you have a uh voodoo floss band that works well uh normal mini band will work well will work well just just as easily uh that same spot that we just had the lacrosse ball on you just get a tie a tourniquet okay nothing Nothing fancy. It helps if you have a partner, you'll be able to get it a little tighter, but you should be able to rig up something yourself. But the tighter, the better. You want this tight enough that it feels like it's cutting off circulation. I gotta say, this one has helped my shoulder right before a workout so that pain and inflammation would be diminished so I could get some training in without excruciating pain. And it did feel like it interrupted the inflammation cycle a little bit. Like it was, uh, it was therapeutic, it wasn't just a temporary relief. But what you do, you get this on tight so it's pinning that muscle down and just like we did with the barbell, you're gonna force your bicep to move through that pinch point. Now, as you get through it for a couple minutes, your arm, it's gonna get, uh, it's gonna look like a zombie arm. It's gonna turn gray, maybe even white a little bit. The second you snap that band off, you're gonna see your arm just turn bright red. And you're gonna feel that, uh, that rush of blood flow. It's almost like it resets the inflammation cycle. That's bro science, I don't know what it actually does, but that makes sense to me. And usually the pain in any of the connective tissue around that area, the inflammation tends to get diminished pretty dramatically. So it's therapeutic, but I also think that this, it, it, this one in particular is a very viable option for eliminating pain in the short term just so you can get through the workout. Now, all of these things should be done, I mean, around an upper body day, absolutely, but daily. I mean, there's no reason to wait. You know, if you only work at your upper body, if you only work your upper body once or twice a week, why wait that long to do to do uh, rehab or prehab. Get to it, be aggressive with it. You know, minimum, you know, 90 seconds, two minutes on everything. It takes time, dedicate 20 or 30 minutes just to that issue. But if you do that, I promise you, you're gonna recover faster, you'll be back to moving weights faster. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I am not a physical therapist. I'm just a meathead that spent years beating myself into the ground and I have come up with a few good ideas on how to piece yourself back together. But if you do have any questions, I will do my best to dig through my resources and get back to you. So until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you guys.